Hey there, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. This is a Daihatsu Hijet deck van, which is basically kind of like the K van, uh, but has a pickup truck back end on it here. And so these are used as commercial vehicles here in Japan for people that need a little bit more room than your standard uh, K truck but then can go for a smaller bed in the back. Now I can attest to the coolness of one of these because we have our own semi-similar similar vehicle here and uh, has its own little back you can put your own things in. Look, we got jack stands, battery jump boxes, fuel in them, and then we can carry whatever else that we need. They're very useful. This one here has a bigger back in the back of the back of it. And I just put this in, this is ours for hitting people um, that we don't like. And I just brought it because our back is very small and this one's bigger. And so if you put this from one end to the other, the rear end of ours goes up until the end of this bar. So this is about another 20 centimeters longer than our back and maybe a little bit deeper, I'm not sure. In total, I think you could probably put in like a uh, of, I don't know, two cubic meters of things into the back or so. And then it's rated here for the Japanese government as being able to carry 250 kilograms, but that's, that's only for registration purposes. And so, I think you'd be able to carry 350, maybe 400. The K vans are rated at 350 and they can carry 500. And so this is going to be a post-purchase inspection. Wow, oh no, I'm about to get hit. I buy a van. Uh, Post-purchase inspection video. This was bought from the auction on request for buyer in the UK. And we'll have a look at this. Okay, so first off, we got the auction inspection sheet here. I'm going to translate this in just a second. Engine running condition is quite good. AC works. And this is a five-speed manual transmission version. I checked the coolant and it looks okay. Didn't check the oil. The engines are right here. They're in the middle. It's a little bit tricky to check the oil on them and so didn't do it. Uh, and uh, let's go over to the auction inspection sheet. Um, hmm. Well, today is not a good day for thinking. I wanted to turn the engine off while I'm doing that. Engine off. Of the things people complain in the comments, that's one of the popular ones. Dude, why'd you leave the engine running for the whole video? Well, we do like to have the engine come up to a complete uh, full operating temperature when we're shooting it. Some cars, it takes longer than others. Anyways, I'll translate this for you from Japanese into English. It's a 2006 Hijet deck van. Now, the Hijet is the name for the van and the truck, and they both run a similar chassis. The deck van is the one you're looking for if you want that back end trunk. This one's a two-wheel drive model, but they do come in four-wheel drive. It's the Oxirade 4 with an interior B and an exterior C. I'd say it's probably a pretty good exterior for a C. C can be pretty bad or okay. In this case, it's okay. In fact, probably closer to good. It's a 660cc engine. That's super tiny. That's 0.6 of a liter. And then has a turbocharger. Puts out 64 horsepower. It's five-speed manual. 4,300 kilometers. A nice low mileage on there. And keep in mind, these are industrial vehicles. And so more often than not, they, are, they, they tend to be fairly um, used so to speak. Hey, that's mine. Let's see if you can park it there. <laughs> Defenders are really big for most Japanese uh, people. Even though they're, they're deceptively small. They're very short vehicles. I was making a weird sound. Well, I want to get through because that's where I want to stand right now. Okay, so dashboard has screw holes in it. Dashboard has a monitor screwed onto it. Various scratches, dents, and scuffs. And the bed is scratched. And the Defender's power <laughs> steering is making sounds. Not on this car, the Defender. Um, and, and that's a very common thing on Defenders if you didn't know. Now, the body has some scratches in it in various places. I'd say as a whole it's, it's pretty good. Only the tail light is cracked there. That's really the only uh, big one. Okay, let's do the once around here. And then the footprint of these is really small. They're about Austin Mini size. And so in most countries, something like this would be extremely unique 
It has sliding doors on both sides. And then uh, easy seating for four. The seats in the back flip around to give you more storage in the back if that's what you want. It has tie down straps in the bed. Cool, very cool. I love me some trucks that are based off of cars, as you can see. And prices for these are not bad. I can't, I can't say in this video because it's a private matter, but if you're interested, send us an email. And we can explain that to you. Uh, that guy needs to work on his parallel parking skills. Okay, so the front end is generally pretty good. It has a couple of mild scratches, but nothing I can really point out. I'll show you one of them here. Like it's down into the paint, but it doesn't stand out very much. So a few like that. We got a scuff down here. And something here. Now the side panel looks good, really no dents or anything. And then the back corner has another scratch here that's fairly big. Now these were marked in the auction inspection sheet. Okay. Going over to the other side, we've got a few mild dents in this area here. So have a look. Okay. And here's the crack tail light. Looks like they had put some sort of an epoxy on here to seal it up, but probably better just to get that replaced. Okay, that's pretty much it in terms of the damage to it. And so that's nice. Seems to be in pretty good condition. I'm gonna lower the back end here. Now, unlike, uh, unlike mine, the open deck, this doesn't go down like a tailgate. It goes all the way down like that. Uh, this could either be better or worse for you, depending on what your needs are. But if this is worse, you can rig up some wires that go from the bed up to one of the tie down straps. And so you can have it be completely flat and level with the back. Let me just check. Uh, not completely flat. This will be a little bit higher by the looks of it. But then if it's like this, it's easier to load things into the back if you want. And then that's a very low bed, so very easy to put stuff in. It can't carry very long things, obviously, but for something that you need longer things, you can buy a, a, a truck with longer bed. <clears throat> that makes sense, right? Oh, that was easy to close. Okay, so tie down hooks here, here, there, and there. Reflectors here. And a mat in the back. The underside has no rust or anything. Sign this car. Hey, Send me my sign. I'm gonna put the camera down while I sign to this car. Okay, ta-da, all done. See if anyone's still watching this video, actually. Uh, let's go into the back. Keep in mind, both sides sliding doors, and so this is extra convenient. Kind of an annoying sound. Let's go turn that off. Take the key out. Okay. So both doors open appropriately. You can see the back seats here. That gives you a suitable amount of leg room, despite this being a very small car. And then if you need extra cargo capacity, flip this and flip this. It becomes a little bit strange, but it works. And then it has this uh, extra durable mat in here so that uh, if it does get dirty, it's easy to clean off and very easy to flip it back. You can do it with one finger, look at that. Now it doesn't lock in. If you want to lock it, there's actually a strap on that side over there and you attach that strap to something. Lots of headroom. Take a look at this. It's me, and look at all this headroom. And I'm a 178 centimeter guy, 5'10". You could be giant and still get away with going in here. I'm going to leave that door open. 
Into the front section, we've got power windows on the front here. They've been checked and they work. A card slot, that's kind of an interesting thing. I've never seen something like that. And you can put like a toll collection card or parking ticket in there. Very cool. It's, it's narrow, but there's lots of room forward to backward. And sitting in it is comfortable. Shifting is better on this than some of the K-Vans that I've seen. It's not super comfortable. The reason why is because front section here, look at this, I got the heel rested on the bottom and then I can hit the brakes and I can hit the clutch without lifting up the feet. On some of them, because of the clearance that you have in here, you actually have to lift up your foot when you're hitting the clutch. Does that make sense? So your foot has to come off the ground. To me, that's very uncomfortable. So power steering works well. You can see it's very simple gauge set here. Got a CD player and some sort of a monitor that's screwed onto the dashboard, as the auction sheet said. Has never been smoked in, from what I can tell. In fact, I think this is how the car comes with that in a little baggie, the cigarette lighter. Shifter works, very close to the steering wheel. One thing about these K-Vans is they have very tight turning circles. Very, very tight. Probably like twice that of the Defender, because the Defender's not very tight. More screw holes there. That was also mentioned on the auction inspection sheet. What's this? Wow, secret panel! Not put back properly. Cool. And a cup holder. That's fun. Check it. Okay. Just knock the keys on the floor or on the ground. Okay, that's that's basically everything here. So let's go over to the other side so that you can see the side profile with the doors open. And this will be the end of the video. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thank you so much and have a nice day.